LumaFusion is my favorite editing app. Here's 10 advanced editing tips in LumaFusion. Tip number one, preview your clips before adding them to a project. There are several reasons for doing this. One is that you want to make sure you're using the right clip. And the second is you need to make sure that there's no watermarks. In this first clip, you can see a TikTok watermark. I will show you how to change the dimensions of your photo. There it is again. In this next clip, you'll see this is the clip that I screen recorded without the TikTok watermark. In this video, I'm going to give you one more example of how you can take a modern digital photo and turn it into a vintage photograph. As well, I will show you how to change the dimensions of your photo. Make the I'm going to use my original clip, the one without the TikTok watermark, so I'll drop that into the timeline. Tip number two is to create a blurred background because as you can see, this video was actually screen recorded on my iPhone. This is easy in LumaFusion. Your aspect ratio setting should be 16 by 9 landscape. This is the setting most commonly used for YouTube. Double tap the clip, go to frame and fit, and increase the size of the clip so that it fills the entire preview area. This clip will be blurred. Select the clip once more and then duplicate the entire clip. Detach the audio from the top clip so that you can avoid echo. And then delete the audio that you've detached. Gaussian blur has been applied to the bottom clip. Double tap the top clip, select frame and fit, and shrink the top clip down so that the entire iPhone screen recording is visible within the preview area. Tip number three is to crop your video. I've got these black sections on the top and bottom of this video. Then double tap the top clip, go to frame and fit, and crop the top and bottom until the black bars disappear. Make sure after you crop your video that you resize it to fill the entire preview area. Go to frame and fit, open size and position, and move the size slider until the photo here fills the whole preview area. You can also crop the sides. Notice that when I play the video, this photo is perfect, but in the second clip, the black bars appear on the sides of the screen recording. Open up frame and fit, tap on cropping, but this time remove black bars from the left and the right. Let's take a look at the final result. The entire video looks the same. The black bars from both clips are gone. Tip number four is to remove unwanted footage. This includes footage that's not correct, like this line here. You can obviously see that there is a filter applied. Now there's no additional filters applied. There's the vivid filter. If you want. So I'm going to remove this whole section. to see how it looks. If you want to apply a bit of a sepia tone look, use Vivid Warm. See these flat areas where there's no waveform? No, these are areas where I'm not speaking. These should be removed too. You can do this process as many times as you need to to make sure that the audio and video match up. Tip number five is to use titles to make your own graphics. Tap the plus sign and choose Overlay Titles. Take the end of the title like this and stretch it out to the length that you want the graphic to be. Because you have video underneath, you'll need to add a green screen. This can be accomplished by adding a shape. Even though the graphic will include text, I'm going to double tap the top clip and delete the air text here object. The reason I put a video underneath all my graphics is because it helps me when I'm designing them. Tap the plus sign and choose add shape. Expand the rectangle to cover the entire preview area, and then switch the color to green or blue. The first time I create this, I'm going to use green just to show you a problem that you might encounter. Once you've got the color set, you can add your image. Tap the plus sign and choose the image box. The third option on the right. Tap where it says select image on the right hand side and look for the image you want to use. If you can't find the image, you can navigate to where your image is stored. If you still can't find the image, you can actually put 
the photo you want to use in a specific album inside the Photos app, and then it will appear inside LumaFusion, and you can add it. I can't find the image that I'm looking for, so the first thing I'm going to do is navigate to my thumbnail photos album inside LumaFusion, and then I'll close LumaFusion and open the Photos app to place the photo I want to use inside that album so that it appears inside the LumaFusion app here. Here's the image I want to use. I'll press and hold, and then tap on share. Actually tap on add to album, then it'll be added to the album that I have open. Once you select it from this window, it will appear on screen. Resize it and reposition it as needed. My image, as well as the shape I'm going to add, should take up most of the screen. I'll add another shape, and this time I'll use a speech bubble. Resize and reposition the shape, as well as your image, until it looks right to you. Once that's done, of course you can add your text. This text can say anything that you like. I'm going to just add some text, and leave the text as your text here, and then save it as a preset. If you save it as a preset, you can bring it into any project you like, and you can change the text at any time without rendering it out, taking a snapshot or a screenshot. Tap the plus sign and choose text. You'll see a text box appears in the middle of the screen. Move it so that it appears in the center of the bubble. The default face color is white. So first select the font you want by tapping on the font selector and then scroll down and tap on face color and change that to whatever face color you like. You need to adjust the size of the text to make sure that the line of text fits inside the speech bubble shape. You can do that by adjusting the size slider. That looks good. Once you've got your text saved and your graphic is finished, you can save it as a preset. This will allow you to use it in any project. To do that, just tap on the star and give your preset a name. I'm going to use the name in video message. Now you can go back to the main timeline and delete this graphic because you have the preset saved. Just add your overlay title and stretch it out to make it the length that you want by grabbing the end and holding it. Let go when it gets to the length, then double tap your overlay title and select the preset you've just created. Make sure the text properties are closed or you won't see the user defined presets. Select your preset and then that title will change to reflect the properties and parameters of that preset title. Tap on the your text your object and add whatever text you like. Just type it in and make sure that it fits inside the image and looks good. Next, you'll have to remove the background shape, but you may have a problem when doing so. Go into the color and effects editor, tap the chroma key, and choose the green screen chroma key. Tip number seven is to troubleshoot green screen issues. As you can see, because my hat is green and matches the color of the background shape, the image is somewhat distorted. To fix this, all you need to do is go back to the title card. Select your background shape and change the face color from green to blue. When you select colors for using chroma key, make sure that that color does not exist within your image. I've switched the background color to this blue. Tap anywhere on the screen to dismiss the color picker and go back to the color and effects editor. When you do, tap on the chroma key icon once more and you'll see that the blue screen key will work properly. When you're deciding what key to add, look for the key that has the black background, as this will tell you what the image will look like when it is placed on top of the video in the preview area. Notice the blue screen key has a black background. So that's the one that I need to use. You can see the video properly in the background. Go back to frame and fit and shrink the image down 
and position it where you want to. Tip number eight is delete a preset title. Now that you've made changes to your preset, in order to use it in other projects, you have to delete the old preset. Just long press on the preset and tap delete when it appears and resave the preset title. To do that, tap on the star and give your new preset a name just like before. When you tap the star icon once more, the preset with the blue background will be saved in place of the one with the green background. Now you can use it in any project you like, and the image should appear properly. In fact, I use this image to create the thumbnail for this video. Tip number 10 is change a preset title. If you want to change a preset title to use a different preset, double tap your overlay title once more. Make sure the text properties are closed and that you're on the title card. Select your new user preset and everything will change. You may have to make slight adjustments to the size of the text, but notice you do not have to re-enter your text. Watch this video recommended by YouTube. This playlist contains more tutorials just like this one. Don't forget to tap on the notification bell once you've subscribed so you're notified when I upload a new video. Join me next time.